All right, now it's time for the figure eight race. This is the compact front wheel drive figure eight race, Jeffrey. We just saw in this playlist these exact style of cars racing in a 20 lap, one third mile oval endurance race. Yes. That was such a long race. Yes. It but it was technically called an enduro. Well, think about it. I mean, that was almost six and a half miles. You know, you got to pack that fuel in there. Right. Uh, we think that nope we're not waiting anymore this field was supposed to be 16 it's cars down nine. we're down to nine and if you watch the enduro race you'll see why <laughs> we had some mechanical issues there uh, everyone's just saving it for the flagpole so in this one the 19 who won the enduro race sorry for the spoiler uh is starting on the pole he would have started in who cares? Robert Rice starting in the second spot? Fifth, the number seven. somehow. So anyways, yeah. Robert Rice in the seven, the zero two of Tony Cummings, the 27 of Joseph Barreter, if I'm saying that name incorrectly, the 95 of Joe Labrosiano. they the police car. All right. The zero four of Val Cummings, who, if you watch that enduro race, was a major part to the results of that race. The 16 of Robbie Salcedo, the four oh, that yeah. is piloted by Brian Deegan, and rounding out the field, the number three. Oh yeah, Deegan don't like another four. Of Cheryl Highland, the 31. Well. This is going to be interesting, Tommy. What kind of experience do you think Brian Deegan has in a figure? Uh, probably none, but he's making the most of it. He's getting by a polka dot yellow station wagon. That's Brian Deegan in the four. Haley Deegan drove in the number 38 enduro car a race ago. And your leader is the guy who is leading most of that enduro right now. Cheryl said, I don't think so. That's a number of... Now, this is, this is a trick here. 19 of because, Rodney Argo. Because, Tommy, a lot of times people make late decisions to go through this intersection. You do not have the opportunity to jump on the brakes tonight. No. Your car I mean, is going to slide. Exactly. So you've got to think well ahead. Rodney Argo crossing it up with Cummings there in the 04. And Argo does have some pressure behind. He's not bumper to bumper yet, but Robert Rice in the 7 machine has the most figure eight, figure eight racing experience out here. Yeah, he used to do it back when we had outlaw cars doing it. Outlaw cars, he's done it plenty of times, plenty of places. Deegan's got to move. The leaders are coming. I tell you what, that 19 does look faster than Robert Rice. Battle for the third spot, you see him three in a row. The 95, the 02, and the 27. Through the crossover. Oh, yeah. It's getting interesting. It's it always impresses me how this this race and, was set up for twice as much of the yeah. Floor, so and it always impresses me how we can see such a gap between first second and then the huge gap at third. I mean they're closing in to be a half track gap between first and second and the third place runner. Argo still your leader. Everybody having to deal with that lake in the infield. And they want to... Hmm, trouble for the O2 machine. Yeah, Cummings, uh, that's the 0-2 of Tony Cummings. Well, we just lost the announcer that we just hired. He just fell out of his chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Robert Rice, he's trying to gain as much time, and he sees lap traffic. He's in the orange number 7 machine, but he's got to close in to that number 19 of Rodney Argo to do something for that lead battle. The problem is... The 19 is stayed a good two to three car length gap oh, over second. Boy. That was a figure eight in itself. The 27 around in turn number one and two. Now Robert is closing in, but still has a bit of a gap through those straightaways. He actually makes up a bunch of time in the corners. Well, remember Robert, Tommy, a very, very... Um, a big thing in the news was when Robert showed up with a spoiler and everyone said, well, now you have an aerodynamic downforce advantage. Yeah, you can see he's running in second trying to Very close into a guy who does not have a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> he's as bad as Kevin Harvick, really. Oh, I guess. I mean, like, how obvious can you make it, Kevin Harvick? We should tag Kevin Harvick in this. I do think that your leaders, the reason why they're so far ahead is because they have their defrosters on. Oh, 
strategy. Because Tony, what, what Tony Cummings... Out, what, what if they run out of gas? That's true. Tony Cummings did pull off the track, and he was wiping his windshield. The car was completely under power. <laughs> he just could not see out the front end. Uh, I, I learned in the driver's meeting that there's someone in this figure eight race that's driving with a blind right eye. Well, they, that only makes they, sense. They asked, he was asking, do we have to run a window net because it's hard to see? And they're like, it is? <laughs> he was like, well, I can only see out of one eye. Oh, wonderful. Well, Robert Wright dealing with Brian Deegan right now in the four. Brian Deegan holding off that seven of Robert Rice. This is big because Robert's not going to put up with this. No. Like, good thing they did not have Deegan driving a limousine. That's all I got. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> Brian Deegan there in the four going a lap down to second place runner Robert Rice. Well, your leader has opened up a gap at this point. But we're still messing around in the interview. I feel like Robert, or I feel like Deegan has too nice of a car here tonight. Like, yeah. I think should've he should have gotten. That he could beat up? Yeah, he should have gotten something that he can beat up for tonight because I don't think he was. Me I don't think Brian Deegan came here to win a race. I think he came here to put on a show. From what I've seen so far, I, I totally agree. Now, if you think that, if you've ever seen anyone checking out in a figure eight race, Tommy, I don't think I've ever seen anyone checking out to the extent of Cheryl Highland. She's yeah, she, hiding. I think she's actually getting ready for the uh, flagpole race. She's just uh, an event. Oh, do you think maybe she's getting some uh, a, a good look at the Yes, flagpole? I think she is really understanding that L Illuminati flagpole. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to watch out. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're breaking. Well, we're 13 laps into a 20-lap race. So if my math has me correct, we're seven laps to go. Um, Running the calculator on this? Yes. Okay. Right. I didn't have to carry any numbers. I think Deegan's aiming for the puddle. He drives like us. Yes. Can Robert Rice catch the 19 of Argo? It's kind of funny, Jeffrey. So going into this event, we knew that there would be a storm. Yes. But we didn't know if we would be racing here this weekend because normal circumstances, the track cancels the event, postpones it to another weekend. But I think the management, this management said, well, what the heck? These things are junkyard cars. Why should we care? They've got treaded tires on them. They can drive in, on the freeway in the rain. Why can't they do it? Oh, boy. Why can't they do it on the track? Right. Robert Rice has closed back in on the 19 machine for the lead. Tommy with five laps to go. You know, I think it's at the point where either the 19 of Argo has maybe gotten too comfortable or Robert Rice is pushing it now. He watched that hourglass run dry. And he's going to have to put his foot in it now. now and maybe you, the bumper. Yeah, well, maybe he'll just, I don't know. I mean, it's so wet out there, the bumper might just slide right off. That is a battle there down the front straightaway into turn we, number one. You and I would have probably had issues tonight with our defrosters. Oh, yeah. Deegan's still fogged up. He don't care. Okay. That was closer than I thought they were going to make it. Argo, still your leader. He did not tap the brakes one bit. Rice at sideways in the second spot. So Rice will lose a ton of time out of turn number four. But they're catching a big pack in the intersection, Tommy. This is going to be something that is going to whoa up that number 19 machine. Three cars compared to two. Unless he can beat them. He does. Rice is the one who's going to get help. Oh, no, yeah. So Rice found, to go. Rice found that gap, but it, it's all Argos unless he makes a big mistake. Like you said, Jeffrey, the white flag is fl waving right now. I just don't think Robert's car is handling in the water here. And it's clear sailing for a leader. He's got no troubles ahead. It's like Deegan takes him out. <laughs> Deegan goes in reverse. <laughs> 20 laps of figure eight racing comes to a finish at the start finish line and it's two for two tonight for rodney argo in the number 19 through the puddle and to the checkers robert rice in the second spot third spot will be the 95 no no wait a unless got him in. unless he gets a little flooded <laughs> there you go celebrosiano Finishing third, rounding out your top 
three here tonight. So how about that 19, Jeffrey? A powerhouse, Rodney two. Argo. Two for two. Probably going to be in the flagpole race, Tommy. But you go. Oh! <laughs> we almost hit the intersection. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm more worried about, Tommy. Any of the competitors or our new announcer? Both. Both. No, actually, it's a uh, good night, everybody.